Okay, so let's start then. Uh, we are going to present the new reward scheme for the community advisors and veteran community advisors. This has been, it's been developed by IOT for some months now. And fortunately, it's a response for one of the problem statements that the CA has raised uh, regarding the Catalyst Circle. Um, this is still under development. I believe possibly some adjustments are going to be made until it's implemented in front six. So the numbers might not be final. And this first slide is just a summary of all the main changes uh, regarding this new model. Uh, and most changes are about the CA's rewards. First one is that the number of assessments rewarded per proposal is going to increase from three to five. Uh, second one is that the assessments are going to be classified as excellent, good, and filtered out. Uh, before, in the previous model, we just had the rewarded assessments and the ones that received the yellow or, or red card, they were not rewarded and not included in the final score. So now we have uh, this difference and the excellent assessments we receive three times more rewards than the good ones and the filtered out will not receive any rewards and will not influence the final score. The budget for each of the proposals uh, it, it, it's able to reward two excellent and three good assessments and if there are more than three excellent or more than three good there is a lottery, lottery system to distribute the rewards between all the CAs who have participated in the, in the evaluation of the proposal. And there is also an, uh, ex, some extra rewards that are distributed uh, to all the assessments made to approved proposals. And these extra rewards are proportional to the proposal budget. Uh, I have I've made several examples to, to show this, not several, but some examples to show how this works in practice and using fund six numbers. So it might give a little grasp of the absolute values that we might have in fund six. And what's changing for the veteran community advisors is that now the rewards are proportional to the number of reviews made. Previously, it was distributed evenly uh, among all the DCAs. If they make one review or a thousand reviews, the reward was the same. And now it's proportional to the number of reviews. Uh, yeah, Stephen. Uh, so the word approved there means funded. No, I'm going to explain it better in the two, I think two or three slides ahead. So now in fund six, what will happen? Uh, we have a total of $160,000 for the community advisor rewards. And to all proposals, we will have 80% of that, which is $128,000. For the approved propo proposals, it's uh, 20%, $32,000. And supposing that we will have 800 proposals in fund six, now we, we are a bit above that, but some might be withdrawn or merged, but it's just an approximation. Let's say 100, then each, uh, the budget for each of the proposals would be $160. So these will be distributed among all the CAs that uh, evaluate or assess that proposal. So first example. Let's say we have a proposal which had two excellent and three good assessments. Uh, yes, Steve. Okay, I think you're already going to answer the question I, I was about to ask. Go on. So if we have a proposal uh, in which we had two excellent and three good assessments, then each good assessment we receive $17, $78. And each excellent we receive three times that which is 53.33, which sums up to the total amount of the budget for this proposal. Okay, 
page so far? Second example, let's say we only have one excellent and one good assessment for a proposal. Then in this case, the, the absolute value of each reward is the same, but the total doesn't sum up to the total uh, budget for this proposal. So the difference, which is $88.89, uh, these uh, returns, this amount returns to the general reward fund and it's evenly distributed to increase all the rewards for all proposals. Next example. Let's say now we have more than three uh, good or more than two. I said five excellent and five good just as an example. Um, in this case, we have the same amount of, uh, it's 160, it doesn't change now. Uh, it might change if this proposal is approved, but I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. So for example, uh, in this case, we need a lottery system because we have more assessments than was uh, than two excellent and three good. So in this case, each good assessment receives four lottery tickets and each excellent assessment receives 12 lottery tickets and a total of 36, 36 lottery tickets are raffled and they will receive the rewards. So it's a, a little bit different. It's possible that more than five uh, CAs will receive rewards, but not the total amount that a single CA would receive for a good or an excellent. So the rewards are more distributed among the CAs who participate in the, in the process. For example, each ticket in this example would uh, receive $4.44. Any questions? Let's move on. Now about the approved proposals, as Stephen was asking, what, what defines an approved proposal? First, first thing is that it needs to have 50 more yes, they knows, and it has to have more than 1% of all the voting power participating in this voting group, that participating in, the, in this uh, fund voting process. So if these two requirements are met, we can see that the proposal was approved. Yes, Thibault. Um, just to understand the slight text structure, uh, if we have three examples already, and now we are talking about extra funds, do we want to already make some kind of like uh, middle decision what what example we use or because they seemed all so different and or we have like all of them at the same time uh, i we will have two two examples mixing uh, approved proposals and the previous examples the following two slides i think these will answer your question Uh, just just a question to check the difference between yes and no it doesn't it doesn't matter which way right it can be 15 percent more no's than yeses as well or does it have to be 15 percent more yeses than no's more yeses than no's okay Stephen. um is the more than 1% of all voting power, is this uh, different than how uh, the funding is determined within, within the system? Uh, I think it's the same rule for the general okay. voting Yeah, forgive process. me, I, I just, I, I don't recall that being part of it. So that's, that's just me not remembering correctly. Okay, cool. But maybe, maybe this is new, uh, not sure if Dora Chris could clarify. Yeah, it's a new addition. It's a bit of a uh, new recommendation by the research team. So, you know, so that would be valid both for CA rewards and also like, you know, in the tally results, you know, what would be shown as approved or not approved, it would also be determined by that. So basically, if like a, some proposal 
very few people actually noticed it and very few people participated in it, it's, it's not going to be eligible to be approved. Yeah. But how does that kind of impact? I mean, if we went back and, and looked at the previous funds, uh, how many of them would that eliminate? Uh, not many. I think some, you know, I think something on like, I think across all funds, you know, maybe very few, uh, very few proposals who anyway didn't receive funding. It's more like, you know, thinking about the new reality we now have with like 800 proposals and who knows, you know, how, what's, what's that, what fund seven would look like. Mm -hmm. Do we have stats from Fund 5 about how many would have been an approved proposal? Well, it's all in the fund results. If you go back to the fund results, there's the approved, the green ones, there's the not approved ones, and there's the ones that kind of, I think they say either approved over budget or, or not funded over budget. I think it's not funded over budget. That's what they actually say in the fund results. But again just to kind of go back to Dor's point we have to realize we're in a very different paradigm now right we are now operating at scale and fund five it was it was a road it was like a it was a it was a test <laughs> for fund six and we're um we're yeah we're from from here on in um you know the the level of proposals have gone up it's not necessarily that this the the same proportion of CAs have gone up and so, yeah, we, we, it's just worthwhile taking into account that there's a lot more um, work to be done. Um, and therefore, yeah, particularly on this 1% voting power, it just means that smaller proposals um, that maybe have positive uh, or a good, a good number of votes um, don't just get funded even because, you know, they've, they've got uh, a good uh, ratio of votes uh, Yes to no. Um, yeah, it means it means that it means that proposals that that fail to engage voters uh, are not eligible for funding, basically. Yeah, and one percent is a very low amount. You know, we might even look, uh, raise the threshold as needed. We'll, we'll you know, sorry, we're gonna. Yeah. Could you consider? Um, the number of wallets participating as opposed to the number of votes, because I think there's a situation where a lot of wallets participate, but they have small voting power. Uh, we are moving away from the topic of this uh, presentation. So let's, I suggest we, we return back, back on track. So the original was that 20% will be allocated to this one. So what is the logic uh, behind that? I mean, how the, this number uh, was chosen. Uh, yeah, the... Well, the logic is we, we want to incentivize the attention of CAs to, to, to be focused more on proposals that have re a realistic chance to be voted, elected. Uh, we basically want to reward people who are like CAs that are discerning, you know, that, you know, they can, let's say they read a proposal and they see it's complete bullshit, okay, or, you know, something that has no chance of, of voting, like we would rather incentivize them to rather than like spend a long time on that, like spend their focus more on things that are more likely to be funded. That's the, that's the logic. Thank you. Uh, just to reiterate on the second uh, point, so when the proposal will get our 1% threshold, does the assessor get rewards on that, or this is uh, not related to extra words for the assessors? Question. It's not related, uh, as far as I'm concerned. The one percent is just a it's just a threshold, in order to be to, to be met, in order to be to qualify for funding. It doesn't. It's not impacted by the bonus. The bonus is the bonus. 
Yes, no worry. Um, I just wanted to say thanks to Dor for explaining that, because I think what, what was missing for me on the slide was the rationale behind the extra award for approved proposals, because we're trying to drive a certain behavior or an outcome of the CAs themselves. So it'd be good to like highlight that on this slide or somewhere near it so that CAs know why they should maybe not focus on some proposals and focus more on others, because we want to have more higher, higher quality and kind of de-emphasize the the crap that comes through and um so yeah that was a really good clarifying point for me so it would be helpful to add it in so that other CAs who come in and read this deck later know why this is being driven like this yep uh Steven. I, yeah I think that this slide is actually just defining what approved proposals are when we get to the next slide it goes into the additional reward and all of that, how that logic works. So this slide, I mean, maybe it's just mistitled. This slide is actually only telling us what defines an approved proposal with respect to the rewards in general. Yep. So let's move to some examples. Let's say if a proposal is approved, which is not necessarily funded, as Stephen asked, uh, its reward budget is increased and in proportional to the requested budget of this proposal and some of all other approved proposals. So let's say, supposing we have $10 million uh, total budget of the approved proposals. This is higher than the budget available uh, to all proposals, which is 3.2 million in fund six. The total fund is 4 million, but then we subtract these values here and it's 3.2 to proposals. So the extra say budget for the proposals, as, as I mentioned, is 20% of the total budget for CH, which is $32,000. Now let's say a $100,000 proposal is approved, then it represents 1% of the total budget of the, this case, uh, the extra reward is 1% of these 32,000, which is $320. So, instead of a reward of $160 for a proposal, if it, it's approved and it has a, all, all these other uh, points that I mentioned, the total reward for this proposal is going to be $480. Yes, Lord. So uh, as Nori asks, I, let me give the rationale for this logic, okay? So basically, um, you know, it's all about focusing attention on effectively managing the treasury funds. So the more, so obviously a proposal for a million dollars, right, has more impact on the treasury than one for a hundred dollars. Okay, so the rewards for the CAs are also proportional to that. So if you, if you review a million dollar proposal, um, then, you know, you had a, you had a higher impact on the treasury right on the on the, the quality of the of the usage of the funds so your bonus increases okay so 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 going back to steps it's like we we want CAs to be incentivized to focus on proposals that are likely to be approved by the community and in addition we want them to focus on proposals that are larger in size because they're because because uh, you know they, they affect a, a larger percentage of our treasury. I'm sorry, I was muted. And just answering Tommy here in the in the chat. Uh, yeah, the idea here is to was to present the the new mechanism to the VCA so can, they can provide feedback 
we don't need to give all these details to new CH, for example. It's just for us to give our feedback and, and see if there is something that needs adjustment. Uh, yes, Ken? Sorry, the mouse wasn't working there. I think I, I think you just answered that for me, but the question that I have is if, if the high treasury impact is affected on a $1 million proposal, then I get the drive to speak to that. But if there's a high community impact for a $1,000 proposal or where they only need $1,000 to make a huge impact on the community, most CAs may be focusing on that treasury impact rather than the community impact. So it may be off topic on this. So I'll back off on that thought process. I wrote it down as a note to talk to later, I think. Yeah, I mean, just keep in mind that still 80% of rewards are don't adhere to it. So this is just like an extra 20% of the total reward. So still, it's more like a gradient, you know, than a binary thing. And also, I want to say humbly that we actually, we never did anything on this scale and this logic, never implemented anywhere. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna run it and we're gonna like talk to all you folks and get feedback uh, with you and proposers and the community and, and we're gonna iterate on this, on that stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, so not everything we have an answer, uh, we know or have an answer for, it's more like uh, kind of like a reasonable pilot we can do in this time frame. <laughs> yeah. So let's check the first example here. Continuing with the same, same proposal uh, with $100,000 uh, and representing 1% of the total budget of approved proposals. So let's revisit the first example. Now this proposal was approved and it had a budget of $100,000. So the extra reward for it is 20% uh, of the total CA's budget, which is $32,000 times the proportion or the percentage of this single proposal, which is 1%. So the extra reward for this proposal is $320. So the new updated reward for this proposal is the previous amount, which, which comes from the 80% and now these extra rewards. So the total is three times more than it was. And in this case, the each good assessment we receive uh, 53.33, which is three times the previous uh, amount and excellent as well, uh, $160, three times as it was before. Uh, this was, this is wrong here. Okay, that's no, no, good. So uh, this sum up to uh, $480, which is much higher than what uh, was it was before. But what's happening probably here is once the CA see that there is a, a high budget proposal that uh, is probably going to be approved, more CAs will be interested in assessing this proposal we expect. So a different scenario that is more likely to happen is if we revisit example three, like five excellent and five good uh, assessments in a, in this proposal. So this is the same, but now each ticket, uh, it was uh, four point something, 4.44, I think. Now it's uh, three times that. So each ticket will receive $13.33. I think someone raised his hand lower than, I'm not sure if I answered the question or. Yeah, I already did. Thank you, Victor. Okay. Um, that's all that I, I have for the CA rewards and for VCAs in fund six, the total budget is uh, $40,000. And the rewards are proportional to the number of assessments made by the VCA. So let's say we have 10,000 reviews in fund six. So each review we receive $4.
So let's say that makes 10 reviews for dollars, 100 reviews for hundred dollars, 1,000 reviews for thousand uh, dollars. Um, when I made these calculations, it seemed a bit low. I'm not sure if it should be adjusted or it's uh, just an impression, a first impression. I guess the question is how many, how many, how many of these reviews? Because it's not like a full-fledged proposal review. It's like a review of the review. Yeah. Yeah. It's much faster. Yeah. How, yeah. It, like, how much can you do, kind of, like per hour or something like that? And uh, um, actually, what I think what we would like to do this this round is also survey everybody about like how much time they're putting into uh, this kind of stuff, so we can not so you know. The, to keep it uh, keep it attractive and uh, but but yeah like so uh, we noticed we don't have that information so we're gonna start collecting it uh, this round. So I see some hands raised already. Uh, let me just present the next slide because it's the last one. Then I'll just open for questions. So what happens if not all the reviews are ranked by VCs? Not all the assessments are reviewed. In other words. So the reward scheme is going to be the same as the previous fund. Uh, we will not have any difference as good or excellent. And all the, all the good and the excellent uh, will, will be rewarded the same amount. And still uh, five, uh, five assessments will be rewarded, not just three as in the previous funds, but five. But the rewards will be evenly distributed uh, to five CAs. They, there will be a lottery system, but the lottery system will choose only five CAs to receive the, the rewards, no lottery tickets or something like that. Uh, yeah, Philip. Okay, so I, uh, I see that you kind of, so I'm guessing that the VCAs decide which assessment is excellent, good, or filtered out. Am I right? Yes. Okay, so the VCA process will not consist of yellow red cards anymore. Do we do we get a rationale for why we did the you know why we reviewed the assessment as excellent, good, or unfiltered uh, out? And let's say that you know ten of us reviewed. Some say it's excellent. Some say it's filtered out. How do we get that logic? Uh, the integration of this new system with the develop red and yellow card system is not completely defined yet. Uh, it's something that the IOG research team is, is still working on. Um, and the, the decision of a review being excellent, good or filter out is going to be decided based on the majority of the VCA's uh, ranking. And if we have, for example, just uh, ideally there should be three like to decide between good and excellent. If there are just two, one say the one VC says that the assessment is good and the other one say it's excellent, it's probably going to be good. We will need a majority to, to make it an, an excellent assessment. And the same would happen between good and filtered out, and excellent and filtered out. Ivo. Um, my question was related to, uh, in the slide, does VCA is the one who had been VCA once or who uh, assessed in fund five? Uh, has been VCA once in any previous fund and was rewarded by that. Uh, Alex. Yeah, I kind of uh, speaking out my mind uh, as it comes. Um, if the VCAs are rewarded, uh, and I share with you, it seems a lower amount. Um, what will be the incentive for VCAs to push on on producing their their assessment of the CAs? And as both systems are dependent, that could create some tension because uh, you need. Uh, CAs reviews to be uh, qualified by VCAs in order to make this new system works. So 
Uh, is there a, a, a chance to, to review that uh, BCA's alignment with the uh, with the amount uh, put there? How 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 much impact do you think it can uh, put there? Yeah, we don't know. We're gonna find out. We're gonna we're gonna launch this fund, and we're gonna see how much. Uh, you know, we're gonna see how much how the fund performs, right? Like how many, like if, if there's like an issue or a gap and uh, we'll adjust accordingly. Yes, this is a temporary model for the VCH. This is probably changing and evolving to a better model in the near future. And Jacob was asking before if this can be gamed. So basically, if you are a CA and you give reviews and then you are also a VCA and you rate all your own reviews excellent, I guess that's what, what he meant. Uh, I believe that um, Nick Dorp can talk a little bit better about this, but uh, there is some uh, working uh, do, being done in the background to prevent this from happening because uh, IOG has the identity, although it's not yeah. uh, it's not disclosed but uh, Merrick knows all the all the CAs and the VCAs are not anonymous <laughs> just to pick up I'm not sure whether uh, you're, you're going to be uh, talking about this in a bit Victor uh, Phil is asking about the logic and the, the, the actual algorithm. <laughs> mm. um, we, we can talk about that at some point. Uh, if it's part of your presentation, great, but otherwise it, it will be revealed. And it, there, there, is, there are some funky uh, symbols in there and signs. Um, <laughs> The need yeah, we basically off. we basically work yeah we, we worked with yeah we worked with like uh, the professor and like two postdocs and and an expert in game theory to create and they came out with like extremely complex very very hard to understand uh, algorithms right and and like and like also the logic you you need the you need like an academic degree, like a high academic degree in math to to really understand it. And basically the process we did in the last two months was just like, okay, how can we make this funding predictable? Like like not like that and, and understandable. That was like actually the that was actually the challenge. So um I mean if anybody is interested to I mean they're gonna publish a paper about this. Uh, uh, ab about that, this this uh, the work they did, um, and we'll we'll be happy to share it uh, once it's out. Maybe, maybe Roman will do a, a, a full fat, you know, no holds barred presentation at some point um, for for everybody that you know re really wants to dive into the nuts. Uh, let's, let's, let's maybe do it after town hall. It could be yeah. nice. I think so. So it wasn't just a couple of guys drinking whiskey and shooting numbers. Okay. <laughs> I wish. I wish it was. It sounds more, way more fun than what I mean, we did. <laughs> who's to say that they didn't, right? Like, who? we don't know. Maybe. Maybe that's how Roman gets in his flow. No, no, no. I, 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 uh, I, I, I scrutinized, uh, I scrutinized the logic and I made sure that every, every single variable is completely understood and understood and um yeah i don't know if, if you read the treasury paper or like similar papers written by this team it's like the same type of mode of thinking and specificity uh, they applied here too no i'm not gonna understand that one as well cool <laughs> i mean i like it it makes sense but uh, i still am confused in the situation where it's like they have three different examples, and to me, they are slightly different the ways to fund. Are they all in effect, or we do some selections? Or in the last slide, I see like it depends. So, so this, but it depends on two different situations. But we have three different examples. 
So are all of these algorithms affect at the same time what are on slides or there is some decision making coming? You mean how to distribute, distribute the budget between CAs? Yes. Um, the decision is made based on the number of excellent and good assessments. If, if we have exactly two and two excellent and three good, this is done. If we uh -huh. have less than, than that, then this is done. If we have more than two excellent or more than three good, then this is done. Yes, thank you. My miss, but didn't uh, capture the second sentence. No problem. Ken. That's why I have to do about four takes for every video before I get it, then I say it the right way. So um, my question, I, I think you answered it on the side. I was a fun four CA, but then um, skipped out on fun five because of my proposal. And now I'm a co-proposal in six, so I can be a CA or I can choose to be a VCA. Where's the greater need guys? Where, because it's like the same 30 ish people that are in this call right now um that are probably all qualified for vcas but what's what's the greater need right now that should be both yeah ideally yeah. you would do uh, ideally you would do both but uh if i had to guess seems I, like seems, seems like seems like the seems like seems like we need the uh, really engaged VCAs. I think we'll have a, 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 you know, expect a larger stream of CAs to be joining, especially now that we opened it up because of the, we removed the constraints okay. for eligibility. So probably, I mean, you know, if you have to choose like manage your resources, I would probably I recommend you to be more on the VCA side. Okay. I, and this is where I, maybe I'm missing something or I've misunderstood something myself. Cause I know from September 9th through the 16th, the, the CA is open. And then two weeks following is the VCA window. I know that my only rule I know I have to follow is stay away from the category that I'm in or the challenge that I'm in. And to remain ethical, I'm going to, because of my platform, if you will, I have to, I'm going to stay away from assessing the things that I've kind of projected, but how do I assess and then become a VCA to rate? Do I just make sure that I don't rate my rating? I, I can, I would just abstain from any of my own ratings. That's what am I missing? Yeah. 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 You, you got it. Okay. All right. Okay. I think, I think I got it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just had a question if there's going to be like a rubric or a, a description of what the criteria are for excellent good and filtered out are for the VCAs just so that everyone's using the same yardstick like if it's like arbitrary then personal biases and all sorts of things can come into that so if everyone's working off like we're looking for these seven qualities that make it excellent. And if they're all there, then it's excellent. And if that's kind of going to be well published and disseminated. Yeah, yeah, it, it's definitely going to be be published um, at the same time as all all, all the rest of this. Um, the the I, I door, unless you you've got a different view. I mean, if you have something to to show now, I think it's yeah. a great time well, to why don't we do get, some, to get get everybody's feedback on it. Yeah. Um, can I take can I take screen share for a sec? Sure. Um, so uh, I'm just going to be just going to give the logic on this for a sec. Um, so the, the the main definition work currently is done on what what does excellent constitute, right? Because I think that's what really we need to to define really well or as as well as possible. Because then if it doesn't meet that and it doesn't hit the exclusions, which would mean it would be filtered out like profanity, et cetera, et cetera, blank assessment, all that kind of stuff. Then it's gonna sit in the good category, right? So the, the, what I'm about to show you, the, the, the main thrust of the def definition work is for excellent. Okay, I shall share. Okay, 
So it's not done uh, by the, the three criterion, but more around the specifics of, of what we, we're asking VCAs to assess the quality of. Um, okay, so Steve and Victor have had a chance to sort of contribute in this. Um, just when there's a little bit of a consensus for me to, 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 to move down, I will. As in, I start seeing some head nods. Drop the right hand column is why is this important, by the way. Looks like Victor went in and removed all of his comments. <laughs> I, I might have, I might have uh, ticked him. I might have ticked him. <laughs> Honestly, guys, it's Friday night at 8 p.m. here, and I can't be reading all this stuff. What are you showing? <laughs> so this is the definition of excellent. Okay, can you verbalize it, please? Um, I can just read it through for you if you want. But it's probably better digestible if you read it, I would think. Um, yeah, maybe you need to send him a, like a read-only version that you can watch like full screen because it's probably hard to... Even for me, the fonts are a bit small to, okay. to read. Uh, I do suggest to share comment that uh, videos, even if it gets loose in the community, uh, you, I never seen a bad comment so far. Cool. Um, I mean, we, we will circulate it, no doubt, and, and it will do it, we'll do it soon. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just finish off doing the first, the, the final first draft of this document over the weekend, and then we'll get it out early next week. But in a nutshell, there's there's no real sort of criteria criteria um, in so much as you know we're not asking the VCAs to score each of the CAs against auditability, feasibility, and the alignment to the challenge. But it's like you know whether the CA feels and is able to qualify what part of their their expertise is going to drive some of their feedback and their scoring. Um, you know, whether the, 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 the CA has been able to uh, provide a, a strong or defendable justification to support their scoring. So if you're going to give someone high scores, you better back it up with, with reasons and specifics um, as to why those are uh, the scores that they're being given. Um, and the, the, the kind of the point here that I'm making or that we're making is that whoever the reader is of this feedback, whether it's the proposer or the VCA, that the reader has confidence that the entire proposal was considered and that the score plus feedback provided was based on a sound analysis of the information provided, right? Otherwise, if it's just vanilla, generic, non-justified scoring and feedbacks, then, yeah, it's um, there needs to be some specificity to it. Um, the CA has overall opinion. Um, comments sort of reinforcing the last point. The comments are unambiguous and demonstrate that they have a strong grasp with the objectives of the Catalyst Challenge and the project team's objectives to address that challenge. So that's kind of towards the, the feasibility of the plan and the alignment, but not explicit. The accountability to the community uh, point here is that the community advisor can identify how the proposing team will audit their positive return on intention 
and advisor scoring is backed up with supporting rationale, whether they agree or respectfully disagree about the plans and budgets. And then, you know, this, uh, this point that we are very keen to ensure that there's a, uh, you know, that there's a transfer of, of, of knowledge um, that creates a positive feedback loop. So an excellent uh, CA review assessment, should I say, <laughs> an excellent assessment should have actionable coaching points um, that is able to guide the proposer about what is or isn't strong about the proposal and what could be improved to make a more compelling proposal in the future. So each of these points are really actually, you know, they're, they're just putting into words what we think we would like to think and hopefully you guys think too uh makes for a, a really good uh an excellent really excellent uh, review and then in terms of good i mean th there's not much to say other than so long as it's um there's consistency and there's some attempts to justify but maybe it doesn't go to the depth of detail as to what a really excellent review would look like then that should be considered good, right? So long as it doesn't fall out of the con uh, out of uh, bounds because it's been profane, or it's been or it's blank, or there's other sorts of reasons for it to be flagged or whatnot, then it should be considered good. But if it lands against all of these points, then that's when it should be considered excellent. But anyway, this is going to come out to you very soon. It just needs. Just a final tweak, and then then it's ready as a draft to 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 have the tires kicked around it. Um, okay. Na Navid mentioned in the chat that how do you uh, separate or how do how do you differentiate between excellent and good? So would it be better if it was uh, what what was the first one filtered out, acceptable and excellent? So there would be like real difference between those two. Yeah. There, there absolutely will be. So the only parts that haven't been added to that document is what constitutes as requiring to be filtered out. So I'll add that. No, no. What what I mean is that that the difference between excellent and good is a little bit vague. But if it was excellent and acceptable, then it's clear that okay, this is an acceptable review, but it's not amazing. Yeah, I mean, possibly. I mean, I, I'm not sure what the difference between acceptable and good is. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't accept anything less than good in Catalyst. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, but um, guys, really good job. Uh, it it looks amazing, and I think we should just go for it and try it out. And then after one month, we are wiser and we know what we did wrong. I don't think that anybody's doing anything wrong. Just, just to sort of draw attention to that. I mean, everybody's doing a fantastic job. And um, no, but I, I mean that um, no matter how much we think about it and calculate and try to think of different outcomes, um, something will go wrong and something is unexpected. So <laughs> then we will know what it was. Maybe I'm already forgetting, but uh, the question for me would be uh, if the assessor rates a uh, proposal excellent, can we say change it to good? But yeah, it, it, was a, it was a good. So it changes just the ratio, but the assessor still gets rewarded because even though he was wrong, he did still had good assessing score, right? Assessment. Uh actually the vc is not changing the score it's just uh deciding if this uh this assessment is going to be removed or not and uh, how much rewards are going to be given to, to the assessor so in this case when i say i am doing excellent score they, and we say he's no it, it's not excellent it's good then he filters it out and you won't get rewarding so the assessor has to be sure that he is doing excellent scores and when he's in himself is in doubt he puts good yeah it's not ex excellent scores but excellent rationales it, uh, the assessor can give like one one star and really explains what's wrong with the proposal what could be better uh, and still could be an excellent 
uh, assessment. I I think the CA is still doing the five star thing, Tevo, if that's what you're asking. So the, the, the CA is still reviewing with five stars and then the excellent, good, and the last one is for the VCAs. Yeah, uh, you know, like, I understand they do stars, they do assessment, and then they also give themselves a reason of excellent, or the five star means excellent. No, five no. stars is for CAs only, and the good, excellent, and filtered out is for BCAs to classify the assessments made by CAs. Yeah. By the way, just to be even, even more clear, the what five stars mean, actually it means I strongly agree with that statement, right? In in the in the assessment criteria. So like it's like I strongly agree it's feasible. That's what it means. So but this is technicality. It's like, the, the important thing is like it's it's two different scales, it's two different processes. Yeah, that, understood. That accomplish, that accomplish different things. On the second slide, uh, why, why I'm asking is that it confused me before too, that if you say community advisors as a title and then say assessments are going to be classified, but it's under the CAs, so you, it feels like CAs are doing the classification, but actually VCAs are doing it. So maybe just, okay, now it's clear. Um, so I want to thank anybody for this amazing turnout, uh, Friday for most of, for a lot of you, it's Friday evening, uh, or even Friday morning, uh, really appreciate everybody for coming and giving, giving us our feedback. And of course we will, we'll have a few more checkings as we go through the, through the process. I think that, I think for the coming fund to. I see the two biggest risks we, we, we should think about is I think one is how the hell are we going to deal with this like volume of proposals? Um, so we, I think we really need to encourage more CAs to, to join. And I think the second one is with so many changes in the rules, uh, how are we going to keep up with like the tooling and, and all the like um, some edge cases, you know, that we're gonna discover as we do it. So, uh, um, you know, I hope you're all ready for a nice, nice ride uh, with that. And uh, looking forward, looking forward for 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 Lucio's input because I think that's also gonna be very, very important. <laughs> Yeah, I think that uh, in this way, probably the VCA tool will be more simple because uh, we don't have uh, this uh, like a uh, lot of criteria to, to follow. So probably it will be even uh, more, more, uh, more simple to use. And uh, we, we, we will see, we will see how, 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 uh, how it will be the outcome, but I think uh, it, it will be more intuitive and uh, at the same time, I, I'm a bit afraid uh, about the volume of CA and VCA, but uh, we we can make some tests about it, and uh, and uh, it will be probably good if uh, something crash for the for the <laughs> because we have uh, a lot of uh, people involved. Yeah. By the way, I think if we will still give proposers the ability to flag stuff. So like. VCA is could as, as they look at proposals, they will have this all this additional information. Like if a proposer is like, you know, I was seriously wronged here. Like uh, th this is why you know that that uh, the VCA would get that context and can look it up if they if they choose to. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so basically we are changing this this uh, part of the process because in the last funds uh, proposer uh, VCAs doesn't have a uh, don't don't have access to the proposer information. We will release it now. Well, I think I think VCAs. I mean, I'd, we haven't thought about it that much, like unfortunately. But <laughs> but uh, I think my intuition tells me that. You know, as your VCA and you and you like, you might be reviewing a hundred, maybe five hundred CAs. 
like it could be, it could, it could happen. Uh, you could use all the context you need, like all the information you need. If, if, if someone made a review, like you would like to know, uh, you know, whether that, whether that the proposer was like outraged by it and why, you know, to, to help you in your process rather than like not knowing. So, but that's just my intuition. I'd, I'd love to hear others take on it. Did you want to go, Ken? Or? If I could, yeah. Um, so I was, um, do you guys know I like doing those videos? So if, if I could, and if I have everyone's support, I'll, I'll throw together some type of video that kind of covers the word cloud. And this is where I would need your help or the rest of the actual CAs, VCAs, the people that have been doing this to kind of put together that word cloud on why. Like for me, it's participation and education. I also, you're gonna have some people that wanna, like what are the reasons that you get involved in it um, outside of incentives? That's out there and I can cover that. I'm not gonna get into the rules. I'm not gonna get into what we just covered. We'll have links to that. I'll have links to the guides and the examples. So, but it, it can be a, a real short synopsis of where the incentives are. Um, what the new options are so that anybody that was there before understands that they can be a proposal and be a CA. They can also become a CA um, and then being a VCA as a CA as well. So I'm putting those notes together. And if you guys, I mean, maybe we can get that two minute um, PSA, that public service announcement that just says, go, let's get in there. And, and so it's not just my face and my voice. Um, if anyone wants to share just a real quick snip of I'm here for this, I'm here for that. I can I can intersperse those, and then we launch it and and point the everybody back to. And Lucio, you're doing the guide. Is that what I hear? Sorry, are you doing the guide? You're putting together the the helping guide for the CAs, VCAs. No, no not me, but uh, with the Catalyst School, we are doing it. So uh, gotcha. you probably Victor, we have uh, some more information about it. Okay, and then Felix offered on the side too to get in, in on this for uh, with this catalyst school. So I'm in for this. Let me let's let's I'll help out and try and put this together for everyone and make it happen. By the way, Ken, if 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 maybe for the sake of efficiency, if if we can get like two three volunteers to just like stick here for a second, you know, we can take a quick recording of them. Like if you want me to. To say CAs, we need you. Like uh, right now, I can do it. Uh, maybe later, coordinating with me would be a bit complicated. Do it. Who's, who's who owns the recording though of of this session? Oh, 